Assalamu alaikum dear students. Today is the second lecture of communication skills and it is also the second lecture of series of lectures on basic principles of effective communication. I am Muhammad Asif Khan, a lecturer, Department of English. So today the agenda for discussion is that first of all I will describe uh, the second principle of effective communication and then we will look into the guidelines for achieving that uh, clarity in the in uh, effective communication I will also give you an example of uh, this principle for uh, for making you more clear about this principle of clarity then in the second part of this lecture uh, I will explain to you the third principle of communication effective communication then uh, we will look into the detail of uh, the characteristics uh, of uh, the third principle that is the principle of correctness I will tell you the advantages uh, of this principle uh, and in the end we will see some uh, examples so that uh, this, and that you people get uh, the clear uh, view of uh, the fourth principle so again i am starting with the uh, the list of uh, the seven c's of effective communication first principle which we discussed in the last lecture the first lecture on the, on the basic principles today we are going to have uh, detail lecture on uh, the principle of clarity and principle of correctness other principles which are there are the principles of concreteness principle of completeness principle of courteousness and the last one is principle of coherence so principle of clarity the word clarity means lack of confusion uh, when you are composing some message or when you are communicating with someone uh, you should uh, remain very clear if there is clearness in message there will be lack of confusion so you should remain direct instead of uh, going into uh, those uh, details which make your message uh, confusing you should remain plain simple and direct so clarity means lack of confusion directness plainness and simplicity what is the purpose of this very principle the purpose of uh, the principle of clarity is to achieve accuracy when we are communicating with someone if uh, we are clear means clear communication is the most important uh, feature uh, not only for individuals not only for one-to-one -one conversation it is also very important for the business communication so the the purpose of clarity is to get uh, accuracy in the communication by following this principle what we achieve we can uh, we can achieve that level of focus on a specific message specific message at a time instead of uh, wondering here and there if uh, we are clear that what is the main focus of our message what is the main focus we want to communicate then it will be very easy both for sender and receiver that or where where should we remain what is the central point of this very discussion this very message so the message is being conveyed must be clear so clarity means lack of confusion simplicity plainness so that is uh, the first principle so, 
when we use this principle in our communication it helps the person who is uh, uh, on that end uh, whom we call the receiver of uh, that communication that he easily understand the message which is conveyed to him the idea which sender wants to convey to that to uh, give to that person because of this very principle what we achieve there is appropriateness it means that we communicate we transmit exact message exact message which we want to to transmit to our receiver that has been delivered so clarity should be there while communicating through verbal or uh, the written communication whatever you name it if uh, there is clarity it helps better understanding at the other end that is the receiver so i am here providing you some guidelines for achieving that clarity the first one is that uh, always choose precise words instead of uh, using rather than using longer statements if one can use uh, short words precise words that makes uh, communication clear means that we can uh, we we achieve that clarity in our message when we are using precise words so if uh, if uh, the sender if he has uh, the choice between the long words and the short shorter ones if uh, you have the choice always try to select shorter ones uh, that is the se second guideline which uh, which uh, is very necessary when we want to to get that uh, uh, level always choose familiar words instead of uh, using very unfamiliar type of words which uh, makes uh, the uh, makes the receiver confused instead of that if uh, the sender is uh, using or choosing familiar and easy words it, uh, it makes communication clear plain simple and uh, there there will be no confusion and receiver will easily understand whatever the sender wants to communicate so i am here giving you some examples for example we often see just to make uh, the reader or the receiver that uh, to uh, to give that impression that i am having a very sophisticated vocabulary with me we often use very unfamiliar type of words for example instead of uh, using after this we we use so you uh, often come across uh, you have uh, often come across uh, such type of words like subsequent so i will suggest you that uh, you should not use such type of words like subsequent dom domicile instead of home you you should not use such type of abbreviations uh, which are not uh, if you think that uh, it will make uh, the message uh, confused you should avoid such things and like the word the remuneration uh, we often see that in official and business uh, communication now the people are trying to use such words but it will be very easy if you use uh, the word pay in your writing the same way invoice is the common word very familiar word uh, you use uh, if you use uh, that statement uh, uh, statement for the payment that will make the both uh, uh, the uh, the sender and receiver confused at what we are trying to say because uh, the word uh, invoice is very much familiar 
So the suggestion is that use familiar and easy words and try to construct effective sentences and paragraphs short effective so now we are moving toward the example uh, for example if you are giving a presentation on uh, some topic cover that material that is related to the presentation topic instead of just chumbling up or just piling up the things you just focus on the topic uh, of that presentation voice tone and words but what uh, you are using uh, they should be clear so that uh, the audience uh, easily understand that message so i'm going forward towards the second principle that is the principle of correctness very easy i'm just uh, giving you the literal meanings of this very word correctness means appropriateness appropriate word exact word suitable word if you are using appropriate suitable or exact word in your communication it will make your message very clear you can achieve the third principle with the help of the fourth principle means if you are using correct correct words appropriate words your message will be very clear so uh, how can we uh, achieve this uh, correctness in our communication and that is by the proper grammar punctuation marks at the right place and and correct spellings if you are making mistake in these very things uh, this will make your message uh, in that phase it will make your message incorrect so you should always care for these very things uh, make your message uh, grammatically and mechanically syntactically perfect three characteristics now i'm go going to explain the three characteristics first of all i just i will just list out these very uh, principles and then you will see the detail of uh, each principle the three uh, principles for example you see the first principle this one the first principle the use the right level of language just imagine your audience uh, your receiver and use that level of language uh, which is appropriate to them facts and figures very important always try to use accurate facts and figures and words if you are using suitable words appropriate words that will add to that thing and uh, maintain uh, the acceptable writing mechanics uh, means that uh, the sentences you are uh, using uh, they should be appropriate so uh, i just move toward the first principle that is uh, use uh, the right level of the language we presume that uh, we can list more levels of uh, language but uh, here i'm just uh, giving you the three levels the formal informal and substandard formal um, normally we are very much aware of the formal and informal levels of uh, our language but here i am just uh, include i have included one another uh, level that is substandard level so we are moving to the next slide where we will see to formal and informal words formal words associated with scholarly writings for example when you are writing uh, doctoral uh, dissertations or scholarly papers legal documents and that you have to stick to the 
formal words uh, informal words are more characteristics of uh, um, business writings uh, in business writings we use words that are short well known and conversational i list some words that are more formal and there are some words which are less formal for example word participate is a formal word and, and join some party or some celebration that is a less formal word endure try is certain is uh, formal find out is less formal utilize is uh, a bit formal word not that much but i listed here just to make you clear that use is less formal than that very word and interrogative interrogative is more formal than a question so these these are the list but we also have substandard language uh, which uh, we should avoid uh, when we are writing or communicating something so avoid the substandard level using incorrect words faulty grammar and or you are making flawed pronunciation all suggest inability to use english language uh, for example if you are uh, if uh, you are using double negative can't hardly that is substandard aim to proving aim to prove because after infinite uh, after uh, after infinity to we normally use uh, the first person that is to prove uh, desire to store using right uh, form of preposition with uh, uh, with the words important thing sometimes we make uh, wrong past participle forms or third forms of the verb that are for example inst instead of stolen we often see uh, the substandard language that is told ain't is not uh, the right uh, short form for isn't and aren't uh, so that is substandard language and students should avoid that language what are the advantages of uh, correctness in communication and the correct use of language very uh, very necessary for effective communication if uh, you are using uh, uh, this very principle or if you achieve uh, that correctness in your enco uh, encoded message it will give uh, a better understanding it means that uh, the receiver will easily comprehend the message and uh, he will interpret it in the right way so when the sender and receiver whatever the sender is sending and receiver is getting the same message it increase the trust level it means that they, they will build that trust level between that two poles sender and receiver it creates great impact and uh, uh, as i told you that it uh, increases uh, the trust factor it also boosts up the, the confidence confidence of the sender that have, that i am sending the right message so these were the some advantages which i listed uh, which we can achieve uh, by acting on the guidelines uh, for the accurate uh, correct or accurate communication the example is for example if you are composing an email uh, or a business communication letter grammatical errors need to be avoided so that is uh, uh, the today's discussion uh, on uh, the second and third principle of effective communication so 
inshallah i will see you uh, in the next class on uh, uh, the fourth and fifth principle of effective communication in the next class take care allah hafiz